Hello ocean people, I'm Brent Durand with the Brent Durand Underwater YouTube channel for learning underwater photography. Today we're going to take a look at the Sea Life Micro 3.0 underwater camera. Now it is small, it is compact, and it's easy to use. It's got three piano key controls, which are pretty iconic for Sea Life cameras, and it's also fully sealed, so you don't have to open this camera for any reason. There are no O-rings to clean, to maintain, to lube, or even to lose. It's got 64 gigabytes of internal memory for you to store your photos and videos. And it also has a 16 megapixel, one to two thirds inch image sensor for capturing great imagery. Now the back LCD screen has also been redesigned. It is 260K by 2.4 inches with great color. So what that means is you can see your images you're composing and also review your images and video in great detail, which is pretty cool. It also now has a manual white balance feature, which is optional for the more advanced shooter. So we're gonna dive into these features and a lot more, including using the Sea Life app to control the camera and review some images. But for now, know that this will be a studio review or a studio walkthrough of how to set up the camera and how to best use the camera. And then we're gonna take this to one of my local dive sites in video part two to take the camera underwater and really explore some more of these features and some shooting tips. So stick around and we're gonna get into this Micro 3.0. The first part of our camera setup, once we get the camera out of the box and this cool little travel bag it comes with, is to charge it up so we can get ready for the first dive and setting up all the menu settings. Now from an empty battery to a full charge, that will take about three hours. There's a color LED that blinks red when charging and solid red once the charging is complete. Let's turn the camera on by holding the bottom button for two seconds and then start reviewing the other buttons. The front shutter is pretty self-explanatory and then the top video button is used for starting to record video, and it's also the up arrow for menu navigation. The menu button enters the menu, and it's also the down arrow for navigating the menu. The very bottom button is back one menu level. So you hit that to go back a level in the menu, and then back to shooting mode. And here's something really cool if you're looking for easy underwater photos and videos. This is the easy setup in the Sea Life menu. So let's explore that because in just a few quick clicks, you can set up the camera and be ready to shoot and take it in the water and you're all set, you're good to go. I'm going to hit the menu button, then I'm going to tap the shutter to hit easy setup. And now I have a choice between the land and the underwater scene modes. So let's explore underwater first. Here we go, three different scene modes. So dive is best used and designed to be used when you're below 25 feet or about eight meters in the water column. And what this does is it will deliver the best color in the photos and videos you're shooting. So it's important to try and use the right scene mode for your dive. Snorkel is designed to be used when you're above 25 feet or eight meters in that shallower water. External light is best used when you have one or two video lights or dive torches that you're using along with the camera. Those can be mounted on a Sea Dragon Flex Connect arm and tray system, or you could even hand hold it. But the camera will account for that light and deliver the best color, assuming you're close to the subject and lighting the subject with that light. Now if we back out to the scene modes, we can see the land scene mode along with underwater. So let's explore land. We have two different scene modes here, land and sports. The difference between these is that land will shoot a single frame at a time. You essentially just point and shoot. Sports action scene mode will shoot a burst of shots, which is actually 10 JPEGs per second when you push the button. And that's essential for capturing fast action. If you're new to underwater photography, those scene modes are going to make it very easy to take the camera in the water and start shooting that photo and video. But what are some of the other key features? Well, first we mentioned that it's fully sealed, which makes it really, really easy to clean after the dive. Here I am rinsing the camera on site in Monterey after a beach dive. And all I'm doing is holding the camera underwater in fresh water and pressing all of the buttons, which will flush that salt water out with the fresh water. And it will reduce any chance of corrosion buildup behind the buttons, leaving the camera good as new and ready for the next dive. The Micro 3.0 has a three hour battery life, so it lasts a long time or multiple dives when you're out there on a dive day. Now, of course, that depends on the way you're shooting. For instance, if you're shooting nonstop video, the battery will last a lot less than if you're shooting the occasional still photo. The camera is also really fast. It has a one tenth of a second shutter response, which helps you capture that action and capture the scene really quickly, especially with marine life behavior. 
Now let's talk about the lens. Natively, it has a 100 degree field of view, which is great for everything from a fish portrait to your dive buddy to something large wide angle, sort of like a coral reef or a shipwreck. It also has no barrel distortion. So if we look in the back LCD while we're composing a scene, we can tell that the image is not being warped around the edges, which is really important once we start shooting. Sea Life also makes two different macro lenses compatible with the Micro 3.0. These lenses pop on the front lens to reduce the minimum focus distance while magnifying the small subject. This allows you to get closer to small subjects to capture great shots. Okay, now let's dive back into the menu and image settings to see how we can further customize the menu for exactly what we want to shoot. Auto is the default white balance on the Micro 3.0. And if you really want the best color, what you want to do is set the scene mode in the easy setup menu and then open up the white balance menu where you can further customize it. Use deep or shallow depending on your dive depth. Deep would be deeper than 25 feet or 8 meters and shallow would be above 25 feet or 8 meters. Those are generally designed for blue water, but if you dive in green water, then try underwater green white balance, which will help bring some of those realistic colors back. Manual white balance is something we'll get into later in the video and really allows you to customize white balance to get that color spot on. There are also two topside white balances. Daylight is obviously for daylight, whereas cloudy is when those clouds come in and make an overcast sky. We navigate back to auto and that's pretty much it. So let's continue into the menu. Exposure compensation is used if you feel the camera is metering the scene incorrectly. Maybe it's a little too dark or a little too bright for your personal preferences. All you need to do is enter the EV and adjust the exposure by a third of a stop either way to two thirds to a full stop. And this will apply your exposure compensation on top of what the camera is metering to get the perfect exposure in your scene. And next we have ISO for pictures. Generally we'll leave that on auto and don't need to play with that too much. Next up, we have RAW plus JPEG, so let's open this up. And if you're shooting RAW plus JPEG off, you're recording only JPEG files. Now these are great vivid images meant for sharing right away, whether it's online or a slideshow with your friends or social media. But if you want to get into more expert editing with external editing software, Adobe Lightroom for instance, then turn RAW plus JPEG on. And what that will do is it will save a RAW file in addition to the JPEG file. And that RAW file will include a lot more data and give you a lot more editing leeway, whether you're darkening or brightening shadows, or whether you are working on removing backscatter or adjusting the white balance, you'll have a lot more room to play with when you're post-processing by having that RAW file. So I always leave this on, RAW plus JPEG. Next we move down to our capture mode. Let's take a look. Single is the default and shoots a single frame at a time. Then we have continuous which will keep shooting photos as long as you hold down the shutter button. Time-lapse will shoot a series of photos and you'll see that oftentimes to show the passage of time where you'll have a jumpy scene of maybe a setting sun or a starfish walking across the bottom and this will shoot one frame every certain amount of seconds and then merge it together in a video or you merge it together in a video during post-processing to show that lapse of time and show what's happening across that great span of time. We also have burst capture mode, which will shoot a series of 10 JPEG images right away when you push the shutter. So it's great for action shots. And lastly, we have auto exposure bracketing. Now, if you turn this on, the camera will shoot three photos every time you push the shutter once. The first photo will be at the proper exposure, and then it will shoot a photo that is underexposed and a photo that is overexposed at the same time. The camera will take a few extra seconds to process those three images, but then what you have is the ability to produce an HDR file from those three images, or you can just pick the one that was exposed properly. So if you're not quite sure about your exposure, maybe you want to try this auto exposure bracketing as a way to ensure you get the proper exposure in at least one of those three frames. And now let's exit this menu and we're back in the image settings. So we can also access our scene mode that we played with in the easy setup. And then we can also adjust the quality of the images. Now I always leave this as super fine to get the highest quality possible. There's really no reason to shoot at a lower quality since we have such a large memory capacity and want those high resolution images. Now another fun one, this is video resolution. By default, the Micro 3.0 comes at 1080p by 30 frames per second, but let's investigate. So I'll open up this menu and you see we have a number of different options at 1080p. We can shoot at 30 frames per second, the default, we can go to 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second, we can go to 4K, 
But basically, I would always recommend shooting at 1080p by 30 frames per second. That is a general that we're going to see in video online. If you do want to move up to 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, the main benefit there is that you will be able to slow down that footage into smooth, buttery, slow motion. So if you're shooting something that's fast moving, maybe it's sea lions or cormorants or sharks, then you might want to experiment with that fast frames per second rate so that when you're editing the footage, you can slow down and create nice, smooth, slow motion. If you're not into editing, keep it at 30 frames per second and you're good to go. Now the Micro 3.0 also has 4K video at 30 frames per second, and that is very, very cool. That resolution is just stunning. But one thing to keep in mind is that it takes a lot of memory. So most computers and monitors and streaming online will stream 1080p, so you're not going to be streaming 4K for the most part. So do you really need to use all that memory to store 4K clips? That's totally up to you. The other thing is that it's harder to process 4K footage because of the larger file sizes. So if you do want to experiment recording 4K, make sure you have a pretty new and fast computer. For me, I'm gonna keep my default back at 1080 by 30 frames per second. For metering, we generally don't touch this. This will allow the camera to meter based on the overall scene, but you could experiment with metering if you're having any exposure issues. Generally, your exposure issues would not come from the metering. There would be other sources to fix, but you could expose based on the center of the scene or based on a simple spot within the scene. But again, average is a good default. Sharpness, let's leave as standard because that's going to be the basic unless you get really into certain types of post-processing. Self timer is like any other timer. For instance, you can set a 10 second countdown timer to take a nice selfie with your group. Color, I like to leave as standard. Now, if you're shooting RAW plus JPEG, you have the ability to alter your color during post-processing with those RAW files. If you're shooting JPEGs, generally keep this on standard. You can play around to see if there's a different color. Here we go. That would work well for what you're trying to accomplish, but for the most part, leave this on standard and you'll have nice color in your underwater photos. Video time-lapse is similar to the time-lapse feature we discussed, but it will merge all of those still images together into a time-lapse video that you can immediately share and export. And video stabilization, this is really important. So leave this on because it will eliminate camera shake and a lot of the shakiness out of your underwater footage. So I'll generally always use video stabilization in the on mode just to ensure that I'm getting that smooth footage and minimize as much shake as possible when I'm in the water. Okay, and here we go. We're back at the top of the menu. So let me exit out to the main menu. The image settings menu can appear daunting at first, but the more you use the camera and the more you start shooting still photos and videos, the more you'll get comfortable with these settings and the more time and opportunity you'll have to experiment with some of the extra settings to see what really works for you and the diving conditions you're diving in. So next, let's check out system settings. I'm gonna push down and hit the shutter button. Wi-Fi is off as a default, and we'll come back to that when we talk about connecting to the app. System reset resets the full system to default settings, so if you ever get stuck and down a rabbit hole and you want to start from scratch, hit that system reset. Format is something we only want to touch if we plan to delete all of our photos and videos off the camera. By formatting the memory, we will get rid of all those photos and videos, so it's essential to double check that we have saved everything off of the camera, preferably with a backup, so you have at least two copies in case something happens to the first copy. Date and time is pretty simple. Let's open that up. But here you set the date and time for your images. Just remember to update this as you go to new dive sites and you can always compare the time of the images you shot with your dive log so you know every single site that you shot your photos at. Let's exit. And memory available tells you how much memory is left on the camera. Microphone, I tend to leave it mid. If you find that it's recording at a very loud or very low volume, you can adjust this yourself. Sound, I keep on high as a default, but you can experiment with this as well, depending if you're using the camera topside or underwater. Quick view, I leave on, and what this does is it will show a two second preview of the image you just shot on the back of the LCD. I find this really useful when I'm working on my compositions and my lighting because I can see what I just shot before I shoot the next frame. That allows me to see what I want to correct and then correct it and then shoot the next frame. If quick view was off, we would not see that image preview and we would have to go into the playback menu here and start reviewing the images to see what we just shot. So for default, I like to leave this on. One time you might actually leave this off is if you're shooting a lot of fast action and want to be able to keep shooting as quickly as possible. Continuing on, language, self-explanatory. 
system. NTSC is generally used in North America, whereas the other option, PAL, is generally used over in Europe and Asia. Light frequency is something we'll rarely touch. That's designed for when you're shooting indoors under fluorescent lighting. You've got a couple options in there depending on the type of fluorescent lighting being used. Date stamp, I will always leave off just because I have the date in the metadata and I don't need it on the front of the image, but that's a personal preference. And auto off at three minutes. This is the default and it's really good for the auto off feature. Now this saves battery because it turns off the camera and stops it from running throughout the whole dive when you're not using it. And any quicker than three minutes might be a little too quick and you'll find you're turning the camera on and off or back on when it automatically turns off far too often. So experiment with this, but three minutes is generally a good default. Upside down is off by default, but you would use that if you want to display the images right side up when the camera is mounted upside down. For the most part, I will flip these during post-processing if I find I'm shooting my images upside down in my head knowing that I will flip them right side up during post-processing. So I tend not to use this, but it's a personal preference. And shortcut. By default, this comes to off, but the shortcut is really useful. And what it does is if you push the menu button and hold it for two seconds when you're in shooting mode, you will open up the menu to adjust any one of these settings that you can toggle through right here. So there's quite a few options here for your shortcut, depending on your uses. I find that shooting manual white balance with video, that is very, very useful because the shortcut button allows you to set the manual white balance in just a few button presses. We'll go over that a little more when I do the manual white balance later on in the video. So let's keep that selected. SSID is the camera's name when you use it with the app. So that is pretty much it for this settings menu. We're going to exit here and now talk about a little bit more with the Micro 3.0. What else should we talk about here? How about the manual white balance? Now that is a cool optional feature on the Micro 3.0 and something that will make more experienced video shooters pretty happy because you can get a custom white balance depending on your precise dive conditions and depth no matter what. Setting the manual white balance is pretty easy. We'll go back into our menu and select white balance manual. And by doing that, it presents the option to shoot a photo. So I'm gonna break out my white balance card, which is a white or gray card. And sometimes you can use white sand or a white fin or something like that. The card is always best. Hold it about 12 inches from the front of the camera so it fills most of the frame. Shoot the photo. And from there, you've set your manual white balance. That's it, it's that easy. The last thing to cover here is using the Sea Life Micro 3.0 along with your mobile device, if I can hold it correctly. Here we go. So let's take a look at how to review our images when we're using the Sea Life Micro 3.0 app. To connect to the app, we first need to turn Wi-Fi on on the camera. So I'll open up the menu, I'll navigate to system settings, Wi-Fi, turn Wi-Fi on, and at this point you'll see an hourglass, and once Wi-Fi is established, you'll see the green Wi-Fi symbol in the upper left. So now let's take a look at the phone. I'm going to turn on the Wi-Fi on my phone, I'll connect to the Sea Life app, now, if you don't have the password in there yet and you're setting up for the first time, look in the manual for the default password and you can enter that to get on the camera's Wi-Fi network. From there, you're connected. Connected to the camera. I can see what the camera sees and I can also now start to review my photos and videos. And that's it. There we go. And that's it, everyone. Those are the features and the simple menu settings of the Micro 3.0. I'm excited to take this in the water to test some of these settings out and share some photo tips in the next video, so be sure to check that out. Once again, I'm Brent Durand from the Brent Durand Underwater YouTube channel for learning underwater photography, and be sure to check out the Sea Life website for more tutorials, tips, and tricks to capture better photos and videos with your Sea Life cameras, or check out my website or YouTube channel for more tutorials. Thanks a lot, we'll see you soon.